Welcome everybody uh, to this call webinar, uh, Introduction to WorldShare ILL and ILL, WorldShare ILL integration with Relay. Um, thank you all for coming and this wonderful day here in the Atlantic region. Um, I just wanted to uh, give you a few housekeeping things first. Uh, to tell you that we are recording uh, and this recording will be posted to the call website and the uh, call YouTube channel after, shortly after the end of the webinar. Uh, I will send in everybody who has registered for the session uh, the uh, a notification when it's been posted so you'll know to uh, be able to go see the recording. Uh, we ask that you mute yourself throughout the session unless you're speaking. And uh, also turn off your video if possible, uh, if unless you're speaking as well, because we have some folks coming in from low bandwidth areas and we want to make sure uh, that we can optimize their experience as well. Uh, we will save questions till the end. There will be time at the end of uh, the webinar to ask questions. Uh, you can either ask them in the chat or you can uh, raise your hand and ask them verbally. Uh, we welcome in both in both ways. Um, I'm going to first uh, acknowledge that Call CBPA represents member libraries from across the region, all of whom sit on the unceded and traditional territories of First Peoples. Uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador, our libraries sit on the homelands of the Inuit of Nunutsivut and Nunutukavut, uh, the Innu of Natasinu, uh, the Beotic and the Bigba peoples. In Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia, we find our friends and colleagues situated on the territory of the Mi'kmaq. And in New Brunswick, libraries are found on the land of the Wolostoiek, uh, the Mi'kmaq and Passamaquoddy peoples. Uh, we at Call CBPA wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the first peoples who share their ancestral homelands with us all. Um, so now I'd like to turn things over to Wendy Witsek. Uh, she is the ILL and Copyright Coordinator for Mount, at Mount Allison and also uh, co-chair of our Resource Sharing Committee, and she will be the facilitator for this uh, webinar. Uh, Wendy. Thank you much. Uh, good day, all, and welcome to another of our Brown Bag training sessions. When seeking topics for these sessions, we received several questions on WorldShare Interlibrary Loan, and we're pleased that Andy, Manon, and Krista from OCLC are able to join us today. And I am just going to pass things immediately over to Andy. Andy, you are muted. <laughs> You're, uh, for some reason, you were fine earlier, but you're muted now. So folks, let me tell you what just happened. Um, I muted it while Wendy was doing her intro. By the way, thank you, Wendy, uh, during the introductions. But once I put it to the slides, to the slide presentation, my cursor was not moving. So I won't go on mute anymore, but I will change. I will put it to. I'm wondering whether I should just go ahead this way and not put it on slide presentation. That way we won't have a repetition of that that episode so is everyone okay with just viewing it as is whatever works for you thank you so much uh welcome greetings to everyone and thank you for attending this oclc presentation entitled entitled introduction to world share ill as you know world share ill is a cloud-based ill service that connects you to more than ten thousand libraries in 50 countries I'd like to introduce the OCLC team. My name is Andy Spilio, and I'm your OCLC representative for Eastern Canada. Eastern Canada comprises, um, extends from Ontario to Newfoundland. 
I've been with OCLC since 2002. I will now allow my colleagues to also introduce themselves. Manon. Hello, everyone. My name is Manon Barbeau. I'm the Training and Implementation Specialist at OCLC Canada. I've been with OCLC Canada since 1998, so that will be uh, 25 years on May 18th. Um, I'm glad to be presenting today. Thank you, Manon. Krista? Hi, my name is Krista Stark. I am a product manager within OCLC's resource sharing team. Um, I've been with OCLC since 2000, so I'm about to hit my 23 year anniversary. So between us, we average about 20 years apiece um, and have enjoyed working with my colleagues in Canada and the libraries throughout Canada. And I think it might be Nigel next. Hi everyone, I'm Nigel Long. I'm the Library Service Consultant for Western Canada and I'm located in Calgary and I work with all our members and other libraries between Winnipeg and the West Coast and looking forward to uh, the dialogue today. Thanks very much. Thank you all. Um, Nigel was a last minute addition when we saw that it included hopeful and forgive my ignorance for that. I know you have agreements and collaboration. I just didn't think about that. This the agenda today is fairly straightforward, a very quick introduction. And then we'll go into an overview of WorldShare ILL. We will also tackle the, the your questions about integration with Relay and we'll leave questions and answers for the end. One of the challenges we encountered for this presentation is the fact that you are a varied group. Within your ranks, there are those who have subscriptions to WorldShare ILL. Many of you, however, do not. For this reason, along with the limited time, we will be showing an overview of WorldShare ILL that will demonstrate workflows, but might not necessarily go into as much detail as someone would like who already has that subscription. And but that does not mean we've forgotten about you. Uh, I'll bring I'll I'll address that shortly. So you also have provided us with additional questions this morning. We will follow up with you after that presentation. And we've said uh, a few words about questions, but if I may um, simply put, we welcome all your questions. We invite you to put them in the chat. That way we can monitor the chat and provide answers. I And I suspect we'll, we, we will be taking questions back with us, but we will surely follow up with you. So before we go into the presentation, for those who do have ILL, we'll share ILL with us, and we invite you to contact Meno for refresher courses, for, for maybe set up a training session. If Of course, you probably are already familiar with her. If you have any support questions, you can send the, her email is listed there along with the, the email address for support. The vast majority of you are new to WorldShare ILL. You're probably see, you probably have heard about it or your exposure to it is limited. So, we invite you to send email if you want more information, you're looking for a, a price quote or anything related to that. We invite you to contact either me or Nigel and our information is listed below, depending on which region you are. And um, over the years, people have struggled um, with the sheer number of vowels in my last name. And so they've, after giving up, they said, they generally send it to Canada at OCLC.org. So I've provided that email address at the end and just simply ask for Andy. I'm the only Andy in this office, so I'll get to your questions. So the, we're now going towards the demonstration of the uh, of an overview of WorldShare ILL. And with that, and not without further ado, I'd like to pass this on to Mano. Thank you, Andy. I will share my screen. Do you see, do you see my screen? My world yes. share screen? OK, thank you. Well, thank you and welcome, everyone. Um, so I'm the trainer and implementation specialist, so I'm used to do training. So doing a short demo will be hard for me because there are so many features 
that I can talk to you about in World Share ILL. Um, those of you who, who have a an ILL subscription, uh, you are familiar with our interface already, but I'm pretty sure that you don't know all the new features that were added through uh, during the last few months in World Share ILL. Uh, there are new features, cool things uh, such as off-system off requests, uh, automation, um, uh, article exchange uh, settings that can be done. So in the document that Andy sent this morning with re responses to your questions, there are links to three uh, sessions that me and my colleagues did for the Canadian libraries for the last year. We are expecting to do more in the next few months, so make sure that you are uh, subscribed. Uh, you subscribe to our OCLC Canada listserv so you can uh, sub uh, register for the sessions that we do, especially for Canadian libraries. So there are three links to three sessions that we we did uh, in the last few months. So. Uh, Go have a look at those sessions. They are uh, adapted just for Canadian libraries. So, uh, and as I said, we'll, we'll have more sessions like these uh, over the in the next uh, few months. If you would like to be aware and hear about these sessions, you can also send me an email, and I'll add you whenever I send invitations like this. Okay, so I am in the World Share uh, interface. So. I have two tabs here at the top. I can open the need help section if I want to and click if I click on general help, I will have access to all the documentation uh, that's available online. I can also contact support from here and have access to our wonderful community center, which allows you to exchange with other WorldShare ILL users. Uh, you can see all the events that are uh, coming. You can have uh, access to all the training that's available. You can also discuss with other users, ask uh, for, uh, for new enhancements if you'd like to. So the Community Center is a wonderful place. If you haven't have a look at the Community Center, I strongly recommend that you go there and have a look at what you can find. So those of you who speak French, of course, you can uh, from, uh, by using this little menu here, you can change the language of uh, the interface if you want to, or Spanish or Italiano or anything else. So I had two tabs and because I am an administrator, I also have an admin tab and this is where I can uh, create accounts for my staff. Uh, contrary to um, other interfaces that we have, such as Connection and other um, products that OCLC has, with WorldShare, you manage your own staff account. So you don't have to come to me and ask, well, no, I'd like to have a new account for this new staff. You create, delete, or edit your staff account. Now, I am on the home, the ILL homepage. On the left hand side, you see all the different uh, sections or like so borrowing requests, landing requests, discover, purchasing requests, off system requests, print queue. But the most important is what happens in the middle of your screen. You can search any requests that are active or closed. Of course, those that are uh, the closed requests include those that are completed, uh, those that were canceled. So uh, you just have to select which which section, which uh, request you're looking for, and you can search by uh, multiple indexes. So uh, well, no, not multiple, but but all by all these indexes, you can only search one index uh, at the time. So title, author, patron, etc. You also have two uh, nice boards here where you can see your turnaround time as a borrower and as a lender. This is a training account. So as you can see, there are <laughs> there isn't uh, much activity, uh, but there is quite uh, 
I did quite a few uh, uh, requests in January because I did <laughs> I did many uh, demos. But anyways, you will see here uh, your turnaround time as a lender and as a borrower. So they, this may help you uh, figure out if you need to adjust your policies or any other tools that are available with WorldShare ILM. You also have access to the policies directory. This is a wonderful tool. And when you click on Paul OCLC policies, this is where you can establish your own uh, ILL policies. You define your profile. If you have special collection, your policies, your schedule. So when you are open or when you are closed, your different ILL contacts, you can have as many as you as you need. But uh, most importantly, your policies. You have three different sections in the policies. You have the deflection policies, the copies policies, and the loans policies. The deflection policies allows you to deflect any requests that are coming to you and that you do not want to process. For example, based on the, the amount that you charge for requests. So if you charge $25 and a library sends you a request and they say the maximum that I'm, allow, I, I'm willing to pay is $10, you don't want to see it. You want the system to reply, respond automatically no to the library so you don't have to take action on that request. You, it can also be a deflection based on uh, the material type or on the material age. You can include or exclude groups within your policies as well, as well. I'll talk about groups a little later. You can also have uh, policies for your copies and policies for your loan. As you work with the Canadian or the libraries that are using WorldShare ILL, you will get to know the different libraries and you will get to know their policies. But we also have great tools in WorldShare ILL that allows you to automate uh, your requests. You can establish automation and the system will process your requests that are coming in or, or that you are sending with automation. So you will not have to act as much as you used to have to, to have with WorldShare ILL. Uh, there are also custom holding groups that you can use. So if you if you have preferred libraries that you have you like to deal with, you can create your own custom holding groups. We also have profiled groups, and I will show you a few of these groups uh, in my um, demo a little later. So profiled groups are groups that we OCLC staff manage. For example, there is one that is displayed here. It's CDNG. This is a group that includes all the Canadian libraries that have an ILA subscription with us. So if you want to send a request only to Canadian libraries, you can use that group. We also have profiled groups that were created for the BCI libraries. So there is the BCI, BCIG, uh, libraries, uh, BCI, sorry, BCIG profiled group that includes the 18 libraries uh, of Quebec, 18 university libraries of Quebec. There is also an OCL group that includes the Ontario Counts Council of University Libraries, and there is the, the CAUG group that includes the CAL I'm sorry, I have a, it looks like a, I can't pronounce anymore. C-A-A-L group and the couple group. So the C-A-U-G profile group may be very useful for you. You can also search any libraries using uh, the different uh, search indexes on the left here. So that's the policies. 
directory. You also have the service configuration where you can customize the interface. So you can create constant data or ILL work forms. So you don't need to retype your, um, your address every time you create an ILL request. You don't have to put the maximum uh, amount that you're willing to pay for an ILL request. So things that can be used from one request to another. You can have more than one uh, constant data. It can, you can have one for US dollars, one for Canadian. Uh, you can have different addresses. So it's all done in the service configuration. You can also create automation um, rules there. You can create your custom holding groups, custom holding paths. Um, you can also customize an ILL work form that you uh, you, that you will let um, your users uh, complete if they want, if you want them to place ILO requests. So that's all done in the service configuration. You also have usage statistics that are available and article exchange that is um, a tool that provides a single secure location where you can place requested articles for ILL. It allows the users to pick up their files anywhere in the world, and only authorized users will be able to download the file. And you can also add a copyright compliance declaration that displays to the users when they access the file. So all this can be customized in the service configuration. So enough about that. Um, here are the quick links. So I have the lending requests and the borrowing requests. The same requests that are here are also available under the borrowing requests section. But the ones that are here are those that require my attention. So if I don't have a lot of time to work in ILL today, what one thing that I should do a couple of times in uh, throughout the, the day is look at the quick links and see if there are any requests that require my attention. For example, here I, I have two AE alert, which means that two articles were delivered to me. So if I look at this first one, for example, I can see that an article was delivered to me for this request, I can click on preview and make sure that it is the, the article that I requested. If it is the right article, I can click on email document patron. So just look. And I can edit the body of the, uh, the email and just send it to my user. And I can mark this request as received. OK. Let's go back to my home page. I also have new for review. Those new for review are requests that were filled by your users. And they are here because you must review them before they are sent to uh, potential lenders. So this one was reviewed, this one was not reviewed. So I can have a look at it, um, search for it. I can click on the little uh, uh, magnifier glass here and search the title in WorldCat. And I can decide if I want to send it to a library or if we prefer to, to buy the document. I also have uh, one, uh, three that are in transit, which means that the three lenders responded to my requests. So they are now in the mail. I may re have received them. They may be in my mailing room, uh, but I can mark them as received if needed or not received. It's possible that it was lost somewhere in the mail. Now, that's the quick links. Now, let's place an ILL request. So when I go uh, under Discover Items, I can either use the basic search mode and I can use any indexes available here. Also, 
in under user preferences, I can customize my own um, search, uh, my own um, indexes, and how how the searches will will display. I can, for example, change the order of the indexes here, or I can remove, if I never search by ISSN, I can remove this. Uh, that's for the basic search. Or for the advanced search mode, I can also change the order of the different indexes that are available. I can remove some of the uh, indexes that are available and mark one as my default uh, search, uh, as my default index. So in the advanced search, I can search into up to five indexes simultaneously, use the, the, the uh, Boolean operators between each indexes. I can specify the format of the document I'm looking for, the language, and the publication date. Those here are not very relevant for ILL. Uh, but that's the same search that we have in cataloging. So that's why you, you could limit your search by uh, the language of cataloging, but I don't think it's relevant for ILL. So let me use the basic search mode and I have an ISBN. Of course, I could use any title examples, anything. Uh, I, I found an IS an, an ISBN that I uh, wanted to search. So I just type it in the search box and click on search. And it gives me um, 15, I have uh, 15 records. I can send, uh, I can change the sort of my search result if I want to, but let's look at this first one. That's the one that uh, I want to look at more a little closer. If I put my cursor on the eye, I get more information about uh, this title. The information is uh, pulled out from the bib record. I can also search for versions with the same title or author, et cetera, et cetera. And I see here that it's not held by my library. If your holdings are up to date in WorldCat, if the item is held in your library, you will see a green circle here. So if you see a green circle, Maybe you shouldn't be uh, creating an ILL request. Maybe it you should tell your user to get it in the library. Uh, you can look at holdings by within your state slash province, regional holdings. So this will include your province and the narrow uh, states or all holdings. So you can see that 272 libraries own this document. Now, I talked a little earlier about profiled groups and custom holdings. I could search or filter the holdings by custom holding paths that I created in my service configuration, or I can use a profiled group. And I want to specifically use the CAUG group, a profile group. So I can open this and just type in the profiled group symbol and click OK. So what it did, it pulled out all the libraries that are in that profile group. So you see University of Alberta, Simon Fraser, if I go a little it. Uh, there are no Atlantic libraries, but <laughs> that's uh, normally you would see uh, uh, the Atlantic libraries as well. So I can see that U of A owns a copy of that document. They are supplier. Uh, the days to, they take to respond. So for copies or loan, it may be different. Uh, libraries can take up to 20 days to respond to a request. You will see that those libraries who have 20 days are uh, the Library of Congress uh, and Library and Archives Canada. That's because they don't want you to send them a request. They should be uh, your last resort. So their location, their OCLC symbol, a summary of their uh, ILL policies. If they use IFM, ha, that's another wonderful feature that more and more libraries use because it is uh, 
a a great way to to accelerate the the charge and the pay of IFM transactions. So IFM stands for ILL fee management. This means that University of Alberta uses IFM to pay or bill any ILL transactions. So if you send them a request and they charge $10, they will not have to send you an invoice. You send them a check for the $10. All this will be billed monthly through an OCLC invoice in Canadian dollars. If you borrow from libraries in the United States, it's, a, it's the same thing. So instead of them sending you an invoice in US dollars and then you have to issue a check in US and send ship it to them, they can bill you through IFM and it's all in Canadian dollars. So that's a wonderful feature that we have with WorldShare ILL. Okay, so here you can say, oh, let's, I, I, I'd like to know how much University of Alberta charges. If you click on the I here, it brings you directly into their ILL policies. You can click on the policies uh, tab and see that they have auto deflection policies. And this one is uh, based on the maximum cost, $25. And they exclude two groups. So I'll explain this very quickly. But when 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 you create your policies, if you're not sure how to create uh, your deflection, I can help you with that. So this one, for example, here says if a library sends me a request and in their ILL, they said I'm willing to pay ten dollars maximum. They will not see the request from that library. The system will automatically re respond no, but they exclude. BCIG, so the group of universe, uh, university libraries in Quebec, and the AAAL libraries, that's the Alberta, I can never remember what it stands for, but that's the custom holding group. So University of Alberta created this group, which includes libraries from Alberta. So any libraries in those groups will be able to send requests with the maximum cost of less than $25. We also have the, the policies for copies and for loans. Each libraries create their own policies. They can have just one or two, others have over 10 uh, policies. So you really have to get to know the library's policies. So that's what this little I is for. So you can decide, OK, I will send a request to you of Alberta. You already know British, you of British Columbia, so you can say yes. Now, in the lender string, you can put up to 15 potential lender libraries. The more libraries you and you, the, uh, the more potential lenders you have in your lender strings, the more chances you have that someone someone will respond to your request. Um, sometimes I have libraries calling me and they say, I always have to redo a new request. Libraries do not respond. How many, so I ask, how many uh, lenders did you put in your lender string? I put one. Mm. So if this library can't respond, your request will not go to a second one and to a third one. So the more libraries you put in the lender string, the more chances you have that your request will be filled. I'm just going to clear this. So you you just select your request here. And again, we have uh, you can automate all this um, and not having to to select the symbols. You can let the system choose from your custom holding groups. You can tell the, the system, OK, choose the libraries from this custom holding groups path and uh, the system will pick up the libraries where to send the request. I'm just going to clear this and create a request because it's a real thing. <laughs> I don't want to send real requests to, uh, to libraries. So this is my ILL request. I can change my ILL work form or constant data if I want to. As you can see, 
information is already into my request. I will just put another OCLC symbol here to send my request. And I can complete the information. I can say how much I'm willing to pay uh, uh, for this request. I checked that I want to use IFM for payment. I can also add patron information if I want to. This never leaves your library. It doesn't go to uh, the lender libraries. So I can now click on send request. So my request is sent and I'm just waiting for the first library to respond yes or no. They can respond with a condition. They can say uh, no. And if they respond no, or if their poly deflection policies deflect your request, it will go to the next lender in your lender stream. So that's a quick overview of how it works. I always say, if you know how to read, you will find your way around. It's a very, very friendly user. That's my overview. Is there, are there any questions, Andy, in the chat? Uh, yeah. As I said, as, as I said, thank I could talk for for hours, but. Uh, well, thank you very much. Oh, uh, there was a question from University of Saint Anne, but I'm, I hope I tried putting my reading glasses on. Uh, <clears throat> I think, I think Krista is answering it. It's from it's for libraries that have reciprocal agreements, mm -hmm. consortia to consortia, and and instead of manually taking care of it, they're they're supposed to be at zero dollars, even though the, the the consortia to outside of would charge. How do the that that can be handled easily with custom holdings and with automation. So it can be done. <laughs> I'm not going to demo, demo this today mm -hmm. because it takes a, a few minutes, but uh, yes, this can be done. Reciprocal agreement can be handled with custom holding groups and automation. I don't know if Krista wants to add anything else to this. Um, I put the information in the, in the chat. I put a response okay. in there, said basically the same thing that you did, although we could also set up a profiled group, um, another profile group if we wanted to do that. And if Absolutely. you are part of a profiled group and you are on the lending side of things, when you open your request at the very top of it, you will see an indication of the profiled groups you have in common with the um, requesting library. So you could easily have a visual indicator as a lender and say, oh, we're both part of Free Canada or some, some such group that you wanted to set up. Mm -hmm. um, and we could absolutely facilitate that. Then everyone has the same set of lenders and people don't have to create um, custom holdings group on a library by library basis. Yeah, thank you, Krista. I forgot to mention this, that profile groups are maintained by OCLC, but we can create any profile groups that you that you need. Mm -hmm. And they will be available to, to everyone. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia kindly shared the link, Manon, that uh, shows that there's a letter of understanding between COPAL, OCAL. Okay call and BCI for uh, reciprocal uh, uh, at mm -hmm. zero. Okay. If I can just I think, add, this is yeah. Pamela. I just want to add to this because we have put in zero before and then our requests just constantly get refused because they don't realize that we're part of call. So if there could be some sort of Canada wide configuration of this for those who use world chair that would be that would be great and would help us with a lot of the manual interventions that we have to do okay so you're getting okay okay uh, we are borrowing we're not lending yet okay okay yeah. so libraries in canada because you put zero in the maximum cost they Respond. They refuse. No, they refuse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have a bit of work to do with uh, the Canadian libraries on this. Uh, well, we're, we will figure out something. So maybe a free landing group across Canadian libraries would be helpful. 
Are there any other questions? Okay, we'll stop sharing. Okay, so, and again, uh, before I, I before I finish, uh, I'm always available for help or to schedule training sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions, group sessions. Uh, so just feel free to send me an email, and I, I will be glad to set something set something up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mendel. <clears throat> um, do we want to move to to speak a little bit about the integration with Relay? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about um, ISO ILL and how we are moving from the support of the old ISO standards, the numbers of which uh, 160, I can't remember all the numbers, but there, there, were, um, there were two ISO standards that have been essentially shelved. Um, they are still in use by libraries, but we are actively trying to get our libraries um, using the new ISO standard. So let me just share a screen here for just a moment and talk just briefly about what, what we're hoping to get our libraries to do. And I know a number of libraries on this call are using um, both Relay and WorldShare ILL. So give me just a moment here. Oops, I think I'm sharing the wrong side here. Hold on just a moment. One thing I'll note, you can see, probably see on my, maybe you can see on my screen here, this is uh, one of the help files that we've got um, on Automated Request Manager. I put a link to this in the chat as a response to a question. Um, we have some very good detailed documentation that is available on how to set up the cus cus custom holdings, constant data, all the pieces and parts that make um, World Shariala work in a really slick automated fashion. So, um, Manon does great training, but sometimes it's nice to have it in print too. Oh, so I am just, there we go. Swap displays, it does not like both displays. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk just a bit about the move um, from ISO peer to peer and um, how many of you I believe are still using the Windows client with respect to Relay and how we would are really encouraging our libraries to move over to using the staff portal. Um, hopefully you saw that about a, three weeks ago or so, we had some enhancements go in for the staff portal to help with navigation and um, some general improvements to the Relay staff portal. Um, moving to the portal will also help you enable, or will enable you to maintain your current resource sharing relationships. Um, we have more and more libraries across Canada that are starting to use WorldShare ILL. And as you can see here, we have over 160 libraries in Canada that are using WorldShare ILL. And I'm sure you're all very well, very familiar with the Quebec universities, the BCI group that have all have all moved to Tapasa. Um, a couple of them are still using VDX, um, but they the they're looking to wind down use of VDX. So we are actively trying to get their partners, um, keep them in touch with their partners from a borrowing and lending perspective. So um, some of these might be familiar if you were. We had a Relay user meeting last, I think, October, November. It's been a little while. We're due for another one um, to talk about um, the new ISO. And just as a reminder, and I'm going to try to not talk myself in knots here. Um, if you are using only Relay ILL and you're not using WorldShare ILL at all, you can continue to use the client using the old standard. Um, if you are not configured, I don't know who would be on, on the call that would be that way, um, but we are not configuring any more libraries using the old ISO ILL standard. The path forward is really to um, do all of your regular staff workflows in the Relay ILL staff portal using the new ISO 18626 standard. Um, and there are a couple, I'm going to diverge this in a moment here, but our BCI partners and World Trial libraries um, that are not using, also using a Relay or VDX solution at this time, or autographics in some cases, um, that borrowing and lending relationship is going to, that window is going to close um, if you're not using the staff portal. Between, if you're using Relay ILL and World ILL, and you currently borrow in World ILL and lend in Relay ILL, we know that this is um, 
the way that several of our libraries do currently use Relay ILL, um, that's really not compatible with the new 18626 standard. So the new workflow options going forward is to do all of your borrowing and lending in the Relay staff portal, which means peer-to-peer -peer and WorldShare ILL and Tapasa, you can manage everything from within Relay ILL, but the creation of lender strings and so forth is a very manual process in that case. There is no none of the smart fulfillment and the automations that um, we just talked about and um, Manon discussed are available if you're using the Relay staff portal. The other option is to move your WorldShare ILL traffic, both borrowing and lending, onto WorldShare ILL. So it, it does mean running two systems in parallel, which is um, which I know can be challenging in certain interlibrary loan offices. So what we would do on the borrowing side is set up the ISO request transfer message. This would allow us to get unfilled relay requests into World Trial L. So at least there wouldn't be any rekeying. All that information could go directly into World Trial L. It could match on automations using some of our smart fulfillment features and go straight out to lenders. And then in an ideal world, um, it doesn't come back until it's been filled by one of your lending partners. Um, and the lending request, you would then go into OCLC World Share ILL and manage your lending requests from your World Share ILL partners in World Share ILL. If you are using Relay ILL and World Share ILL and you currently do all of your borrowing and lending in Relay ILL, you don't have to do anything. Your workflows will continue to work as they are now on the old ISO standard. Um, eventually, we are going to sort of force the move, I believe, to the staff portal, which will use the new ISO ILL standard, um, and it will just be doing the same work in a different place. Um, currently, with the original older ISO standards, if you do some work in the clients and you do some work in the staff portal, they, they should stay synchronized between the two of them. So I believe that was one of the questions that had come through kind of last minute um, that I was able to get a response to. If you are able to move your workflows over, your day-to-day your -day staff processing workflows over to the staff portal, um, the client is still in use for a handful of things, um, for patron registration, for user registration, and for supplier registration. Um, we would love for you to get your move your processing over to the staff portal. Um, and if you're using World Trial L, it's probably time to think about a strategy for centralizing borrowing and lending. Um, and as I know, we've mentioned before from the relay perspective, uh, we're not putting much effort into the client at all um, as it comes for new features and functionality and upgrades and anything like that we're doing in the staff portal side of things. If you're having problems with the client uh, and with ISO requesting, um, our responses are, are increasingly going to be that to move over to the web portal, which is the supported, um, longer term supported relay front end for staff, staff request processing. And I can make these slides available as well afterwards. I just had a handful of them to talk through a little bit. So I'm going to stop sharing because I'd like to see, even if they're static, I would prefer to see people than just look at my my notes and my my uh, PowerPoint slides. Yes, Michael, thank you. I see the the 10160 and the 10161 are the older standards that um, I believe actually. Uh, expired isn't the right word. They stopped being supported, I believe it was like in 2014, so it's been almost a decade, maybe 2015, um, since there were any changes and the new standard was put forth and ratified. Any other questions? Anything about World Share ILO that Manon covered now that you've had a moment to think about it? Um, I, did, I will comment that I know there were a number of questions that did come through kind of at the last minute that we haven't had a chance to really rally around and right. fully understand. Um, when I did look at several of them earlier today, uh, some of them struck, struck me as somewhat support ticket related. Um, so if you have questions that we're not able to get to now or um, when we do try and formulate some responses and work work those back through uh, Cynthia, I believe, 
um, we may direct you to give some very specific questions um, and point you to um, point you to a Zendesk to open up a ticket. Um, and available to speak individually with folks about specific questions. Um, I would probably wanna know a little bit more about what the questions are because I'm not sure I'm the right person to answer all the questions. <laughs> um, and we may need to get on a call with some other, some other of our colleagues to make sure that we can answer the right question depending on the product and the, the space in which your question lies. Um, certainly with the World Trial L side of things, um, I think Menon and I and whomever else are very, uh, very well versed. Um, information about ISO, yeah, I'd wanna have somebody else on the call with me at that time. But yes, we could certainly set up a time to chat further. Um, I can get information. I'm sorry, I don't know everyone's institutions and their their scenarios. So maybe we can work through Cynthia to make sure we get that information shared. Yeah, and I see Marilyn has a specific question about the specific presentation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Marilyn, are you? Oh, Marilyn is from Acadia, uh, Dalhousie, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. I've yeah, been, I think uh, we use. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say we did review the questions, and um, I know there were a few there that looked like we derived that they were spe specific to Dalhousie, um, and a couple of those were things that I would recommend sending to support. But please go ahead. Please go ahead. Oh, sure. And the the question I have for you is, um, I feel rather silly saying this, but I've been using Relay for at least since 2000, and we have we use Relay Windows. We use Relay. Uh, staff portal. We we use WorldShare and we use Relay through WorldShare. They connect back and forth through ISO messaging. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about the different scenarios in your presentation, I didn't really understand a lot of it. And it, I, and I was hoping maybe you could give me some examples of of each type of scenario you were giving because I I didn't really understand what you were saying, and I feel okay. foolish. But I oh, don't don't I have to t don't feel foolish at all, honestly. <laughs> um, so in the different scenarios, if you are um, if you are, are are you currently using the Windows client for most of your staff processing or are you, and the staff, the client and the portal both back and forth um, switching between them? We're trying to use the portal as much as we can, but we have mm -hmm. a, a really hard time processing items in the search queue. So anything in a search queue, we use Windows. Anything else, we use the portal. OK. Um, do you ever go into World Trial or do you ever do all of your World Trial requesting from within Relay? Well, the problem is that we use World Share through Windows and often the ISO messaging breaks. So we have to go into World Share and hunt around to find the answers the replies, mm -hmm. the renewal requests. It's supposed to connect, but many times it doesn't. It gets broken. OK. And our big problem is we were told by Mark Finley before, this was a year and a half ago, that if we want to send requests through the staff portal to WorldShare and have the ISO messaging connected, it's going to be different than the way it is in Windows. And that that's what I didn't understand in your presentation, how it's different or how it's the same. Sorry, I'm writing some notes here. OK, well, let me um, we only have about five minutes left here. Let me take that as a takeaway and I will reach out to you and maybe we can set up a separate phone call to talk specifically about I would love I would love that yeah sure and I don't want to take up people's time but I I got I didn't understand so I would I welcome the opportunity to speak to you thank you so much okay yeah no problem thank you yeah there is a question about the IFLA um, vouchers we yes. got it this we received it this morning the this morning with other questions we didn't have time to answer those questions so they will eventually be answered but the question was how to how do we use ifla uh, vouchers it's between two libraries so if you choose to pay with an ifla voucher uh, the lender libraries needs to uh, agree and you 
mail them the infla voucher. That's basically how it works. That's how I think it works. I'm not mm -hmm. familiar because I don't really do I. Yeah, it's basically a piece but, of paper. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. either a full voucher or a half voucher. And um, yeah, you you can you obtain them either directly for, through IFLA or possibly through OCLC, and you include it as a piece of paper that you pass back and forth. So. So there will be a follow up to the questions that uh, we already responded to that was sent to uh, to you this morning. But since we got more questions this morning, we will respond to those and send them to uh, to Wendy or or Cynthia. Are there any other questions? Pa Pamela, I'll, I will check uh, to you regarding your question uh, or your statement that they were submitted weeks ago. I think the if like I see it this morning, but I will check. Yeah, no I worries. Um, I know I that. The, Wendy said that, uh, yeah, they were sent from the user registrations. It's just that our group had asked the, the question about IFLA in the initial round of questions. Oh, so I'd, I'm not I sure see. what happened, yeah. but we'll sort that one out. No worries. Oh, but I definitely can actually get to that if helpful. Um, we were looking at those and thinking that that was meant more as a in general as opposed to a, a world share question. So we had actually taken that out of the ones that we'd submitted. Um, for a, a future discussion. The, the question that was in regards to the delivery methods was resent, uh, uh, sorry, re-included um, in the later one, but we had we had kind of thought that the IFLA ones were not OCLC specific. So it seemed like a question on how to generally use them. Uh, it, it will be OCLC specific because okay. um, it's in the interface for WorldShare that you can choose IFLA, but it's not always clear uh, what the library means and whether it's a half voucher or a whole voucher. And with the uh, American libraries versus Canadian libraries, when we're doing those uh, switcheroos, it's not always clear. Um, that, so it's a, it's a yeah. lender clarity, yes. policy clarity. <laughs> okay. And you can use the contacts in the OCLC policies directory. You can use the contacts to contact the library and ask them specifically how they, you know, if they use a full voucher or, or half. It's with the contacts listed. You can you can communicate with the, the lender library. But OCLC doesn't really interfere or or We support, the, we support the communication through policies directory so a library can say I will will or will not accept IFLA vouchers, um, but it's not a part of, it's not an integral part of the system in the way that ILL fee management is from a world share ILL perspective, which allows libraries to credit and debit each other using their OCLC invoices. So um, it sits outside of sort of our purview. And, and that brings us to 2 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Atlantic. Um, any final thoughts? I just wanted to say, uh, to remind folks, we will be posting the recording. It's uh, not long. It usually comes up within about 15, 20 minutes after the presentation. But I'll send everybody who registered a notification when the post when the recording is up. Um, I'll also try to actually capture the chat flow because there were a lot of questions answered in the chat and put that into mm -hmm. a document that will also be posted with the recording. Great. Thank as you well so as much. Any of the pre emailed questions, they'll all be included as well. Excellent. And just a, a plug for future webinars, call webinars. We have one coming up on April 24th, the Mi'kmaq 
ecological calendar based on the 13 moons. And I just put up today, although the RSVP link is still coming, uh, we will be having a session on May 17th, chat GPT in academic libraries. Uh, so stay tuned on the call webinars page for more information, or you could also register for the ones that are already open for registration. Well, I, from the OCLC perspective, I just want to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to meet with us. If there's any questions, uh, either funnel them to me centrally or individually. Um, if in Western Canada, please uh, feel free to contact Nigel whenever you need to. And with that, I just want to wish you a wonderful day and thank you again. Thank you, everyone.